about Emerson as a reflection, if you don't mind. So here's a here's part of it. Emmer, as his friends call him, established the Rocky K farm with mother. Rocky K, you know, because of all the rocks that they pulled out, the piles of rocks for the stone fence. And, and farm because it had a red barn, tile silo, machine shed, and the chicken house, right? So Emmer and, and uh, Verna established the Rocky K farm in partnership where she raised the kids and the chickens and dad farmed the land and milked the cows. We were worshipers of the weather. As that determined the yield of the crops to feed the animals, the harvesting time, and the rhythm of our activity. Sometimes we would work late into the night to beat an approaching thunderstorm. I remember uh, Edwin standing outside, you know, the back porch, looking out, fretting about the weather. To this day, I think Emerson watches three weather forecasts. <laughs> and so do we, right? We do too. In Minnesota. I remember the time a tornado appeared in the southern sky over Deer Dam Lake, and Dad got a photo of it on his Kodak box camera. The Beaver Dam Daily Citizen paid him for the photo, and his name was in the paper as a photo credit. I admired him for that and thought it was so cool that his name was in the paper. <laughs> One event stands out, though, uh, for me, as I think about his influence on me as a young man. It was the night the barn burned. We had just finished putting up the bumper crop of hay and oats and straw, and the red barn was as full as it had ever been, and we felt satisfied and even a little smug that we had beaten the weather and we were fully prepared for the impending winter. Then it was all gone. One night, up in flames. The flames tore through the structure and all the contents, leaving nothing but a heap of stinking, smoking ruin from all the work we had put in that whole summer. Emmer raced into the burning barn and got the uh, livestock out that was there and scattered them. I remember he was upstairs, somebody pounding on the door, and he went downstairs and came racing back up and said the barn was burning. Uh, Mother picked up the phone and said, nobody answered, nobody answered. Well, she didn't dial, had to dial, you know. <laughs> anyway, we, we felt utterly defeated and ready to give up. And Dad really broke down and sobbed. But Jack and Harriet were there. So they volunteered to take Kay and Sharon and me to the state fair. Well, my folks figured out what to do, right, with their colossal loss. So we returned the next day to a resilient man who had decided to rebuild and rebuild before the snow flies. So we did. I thought there'd been a lot of people from all over the county coming to see the barn burn, but even more amazing was the turnout for the barn raising. We were also in the news stories in the Beaver Dam Daily Citizen for that. Neighbors, relatives, skilled and unskilled, poured in to raise the, farm, the frame and enclose it in one day. Kay and Sharon and I were instrumental in that construction, picking up nails and passing out sandwiches and whatever we could do. But anyway, somehow that whole barn got built up in time for the winter. So I often think of that experience when I'm faced with adversity and remember vividly the agony of the loss and the commitment to overcome it. With the help and the support of the whole community and probably a lot of the people that are in this room today. I admired Emmer for how he responded to that. And maybe this is a, a relevant message, you know, in the times we're in. Now, we won't talk about what happened to that part <laughs> because the straight line winds came and blew that one down. But that's it. That's it. <laughs> Skip over that part. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I also admire Emmer for how he relates to people. Everyone loves my dad. <laughs> He used to embarrass us terribly when we'd drive down the street in the middle of Beaver Dam on the way back from the Hartzheim feed mill in the International Pickup. He would yell greetings at neighbors or just stop in the middle of the street, right there in front of McKinstry's Furniture Store and the Langmack Drug Store, and have a conversation. You know, hey, shorty, hey, slim, you know? And then cars would line up behind us and start honking, and then we'd have to move. I think it was his uh, nicknames and his sense of humor that was one of his real techniques. We were trying to figure out all those nicknames today, like Kay is Bosco for chocolate milk, Sharon's the Duchess, 
I'm forever going to be Junior. <laughs> Tim's Roger, for Roger Stevens. Megan's two E's and a U. Gus, both Gus and Tucker, Joe College, even though they're not college. <laughs> and uh, even Harriet said that, she, no, Winnie said that she was uh, ding dong. Dinger. 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 And of course, Jack was always the Colonel, right? So we, we could have some fun with the rest of the nicknames. But I went home one, uh, one fall to cut wood with him in the woodland uh, that's been in our family for six generations. And after a day in the woods with the fields all golden and the Canadian geese darkening the sky over Hork and Marsh, we went to the Kiwanis All-You-Can-Eat Shrimp Dinner at St. Stephen's Catholic Church. I remember Mother saying, you know, that's really unusual that your dad is sitting here. Because it usually goes from table to table to table and talks to everybody. So that day, everybody came over to the table and talked to him. So that was another memory, I think, of Emerson. I admire him for his work in the community. And I'm fond of telling people that he served on the school board for 16 years and built athletic facilities for the high school. He was awarded the highest Kiwana Service Award for as many years of service. I remember that day because mother didn't know anything about it, and it was a surprise that she was in the grocery store. So she didn't actually make it to the luncheon when they awarded it to her. <laughs> but she said, it was the day it was recognized, and that should have been in the paper, in the Daily Citizen. So some of my happiest moments now are watching my children discover my dad. They feel as fondly about him as I do, and Gus and talk often tossle the little hair he has left on his head. <laughs> and, or borrow his hat to wear or clamor to ride with him in the golf cart. Uh, even though his swing has really always been more like a woodcutter than a Tiger Woods. <laughs> but we had a chance to go to Austria together as a family. That was a real highlight. Uh, my two sisters, Kay and Sharon, and their husbands, Harold and Tim, our three children. Also went with us, and friends of theirs from study abroad experiences, Emmer and Verna, we toured cathedrals and castles and shared the schnitzel and the glue wine and the turn of the millennium. And I remember Megan verbalized that experience the best when she said, I wouldn't have missed this for the world. I got to spend three weeks with Grandpa and Grandma. She held their arms as they shuffled across the icy sidewalks of Salzburg or down the steps of Ludwig's Castle. So, mother and dad admitted the other day that they were shrinking. Their height is decreasing, and they look a little more frail and vulnerable, yet there still is that twinkle in his eye, a mischief, and a sense of humor, that model for all of us how to live every day. I think it's about being who you are, authentically, and relating honestly to others from the heart. The result of that is integrity. I guess he knew that all along and was doing it in case we might notice. So, today is his birthday. He's 90. So I want to tell him that we did notice. It's, it may not be a day that's recorded in the Daily Citizen, but it is a day we can tell him that we admire him and we're proud of his uh, life and his accomplishments and we are his family and we're there for him. So, we love you, Dad. Happy birthday. So now we're going to bring in the cake, and Janet is going to lead us in. <laughs> or maybe Whitney, or the, all, all the, all the McIntyres are going to lead us in the singing of Happy Birthday. Happy Birthday to you. Happy Birthday. Let them eat. <laughs> <laughs>
I, I know you'd rather eat cake than listen to me. <laughs> Blow out your candles. Think I can make that? Yep. Do it. After, after my son uh, tells me how frail, frail I am. <laughs> he knew it. There was a As long as he handed me this mic and this microphone, I just want to say, you overwhelm me by your attendance here, and I thank each and every one of you for coming. Uh, just overwhelmed to think that that many people uh, would take the time on a beautiful day like today to spend a couple of min uh, hours or minutes or whatever you have uh, mm -hmm. in this joyous occasion. If you can call being 90 years old what a joyous time. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to thank, I, I want to thank a number of people and first of all I, got, I have to thank my, my lovely wife Verna for, uh, for the 65 years that uh, we've been together. Uh, because, and especially the last 15 years when she has put me on a diet to make sure that I ate right to them. and whether she had an ulterior motive or whatever whatever she did now, I have to thank the, the kids uh, Sharon uh, Kay and Gar for uh, doing this uh, when it was first suggested I said forget it um, a uh, birthday is, it, is something we just observe and then forget it as just another day and so forth. But I overwhelm and thanks to all of you who have taken the time to be here and I hope you enjoyed yourself as much as uh, time is allowed and so forth. And uh, who can I... I thought I was going to thank a lot of people, and now I forgot who a whole lot of But I, I guess I'll have to, as uh, Gar alluded, uh, nickname people. So, uh, Verna is mother, Sharon is the Duchess, Kay is uh, Bosco, and Gar is Junior. Uh, Sarah, our granddaughter, uh, is me. And uh, our great-grandson, uh, Sam, is thus far unnamed other than Sam. But, uh, <laughs> and, there, and a few others of you are, that are here. Uh, my good friend, uh, Earl Zeman, the son of a gun, is two he, we're the same age, but he's two days older than I am. And I don't, <laughs> never forgiven him for that. <laughs> Uh, grandson Tommy, uh, Mel is the, uh, Taylor's here is the big guy, and Curly is the champ, and Harry is the son-in-law, well, so what, and, uh, 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 now my is Rick Ruby, uh, my brother-in-law Dwight as well, he DJ, and, uh, uh Gail, and, uh, what a, Greg, Greg is the senator because he ran for a senator or assembly <laughs> and so forth. Uh, a couple of others, uh, uh, Wayne and Janet, uh, one of Jane's. Uh, oh, I gotta forget. My, I can't forget my sisters. No. <laughs> That's why I was afraid of that. I, my, I have to commend my sister Harriet coming all the way from Abilene, Texas. <laughs> I don't know as I have a nickname for her, but uh, our, uh, my other sister, Wood and Jane, who is, uh, let's see, what was her, uh, what did I have a, a name for her too, which was uh, Winnie or uh, whatever. Dinger. Dinger. Uh, Dinger. Some called her the Dinger, yes. <laughs> but anyway, I'm sure glad that those two could come and so forth. And uh, because they came, because at least Winnegene, who is in Rockford, Illinois, came with her daughter, uh, 
who is uh, Gertrude, uh, but I call her Gertrude Annette. And I just don't want to mess up on that. And the rest of you who I, I have various names for you, which I will not. <laughs> but, and I also have to, I have to commend the fact that uh, Grandson Tuck came all the way from Sacramento, California to be here today and wishes. Of course he, he's working, he's with the, uh, with the uh, VA, so that puts him in the federal bureaucracy, so that's how I'm going to do it. <laughs> But, but Guthrie and, and uh, Megan and his wife came down from Minneapolis, and Guthrie is a uh, is a financier. He's uh, if you need a mortgage or a mortgage extension, he'd talk to him. He might be able to do a little business yet this afternoon. And then our other granddaughter, Mix, who is. Uh, well, I better not uh, classify her too much. She uh, makes us uh, been going to school for a long time. <laughs> She's up. Thank you. And, our, and of course, I'm gonna have to uh, can't forget our granddaughter uh, Sarah, who is uh, uh, down in uh, uh, Dallas, Texas, and her uh, son uh, Sam. Uh, and let's see. Oh, uh, Sarah is me. That's right. That's her. That's her nickname. My nickname for her. And Sarah is me. So whatever. Thank you all for coming. I appreciate it. it it's uh, it's a doggone good feeling uh, to to see so many of you that were able to be here. And I also want to thank our pastor Jack St uh, Harrison because. I know that he put in a good word with the, uh, the the man that he is a disciple of that we had this beautiful day. <laughs> Thank you, Jack. Uh, uh, I will continue to call you sunshine when the sun shines, but uh, after when it's cloudy, we everything is off. So. <laughs> Thank you for coming. I hope you enjoyed yourself. Stick around a while. The party is not over yet. <laughs>